Joining us now is a man who's about to hear his name called virtually tomorrow night. Nobody has a clue where he's going to end up, but I know he's going to be a wealthy man. Coming here because of head and shoulders, wait till you see his incredible flow, quarterback from Oregon, ladies and gentlemen, Justin Herbert. Yeah! Yeah! boy! Look at that hair. Look Glad at... Here. Thanks for having me. Hey, Justin, that hair looks beautiful. Thank you. It, uh, it does take some work. It's kind of the past few years I've realized how much work it is. And uh, fortunately, Head & Shoulders is sending me enough products that, uh, that I've been able to, to take care of it. So it, uh, it's been good. Hey, that's a veteran sell right there. I just want to let you know. <laughs> you, you might be about to be a rookie. That's a veteran sell right there, Justin. Uh, all right, let's dive into it. How are you feeling? Nervous? Anxious? Excited to get this whole thing over with? What is it? I'm fired up. I'm, I'm, I'm so excited for this whole thing. I, this is something I've been waiting for for so long and uh, such a great opportunity. And, and I don't have a whole lot of control over what's going to happen, but uh, I'm going to make the most of, of wherever I go. Okay, so everybody said that if you were to come out last year, you would have been top five pick. You come back to Oregon. You win games, obviously. Now you come into it this year. COVID-19 has come out of nowhere. What has been the experience been like versus what you might have thought that it would have been like if you were to leave a year ago? Yeah, it's been tough. It's uh. It's been a weird situation, and we've done our best to stay safe, stay inside as much as we can. Um, but fortunately, I've been living with my two brothers and my family. So uh, my two brothers have, have caught past for me, and we've been lifting, running, doing everything we need to. Uh, so we've gotten all our work. It's just uh, not at the normal facilities. How have the meetings been going? Because Jerry Jones in the Cowboys released, he was sitting on his couch. Okay, He had a clipboard. I think he was taking notes. And on his television was Jalen Hurts, right? And he had a, he had a FaceTime or a Zoom conversation with that. Has it been virtual meetings for you daily? Have those slowed down? How is that whole process of getting to know people, trying to get to know you throughout this entire quarantine? Yeah, they've definitely slowed down. I would say the first couple of weeks, uh, early April, late March, uh, were definitely a lot of Zoom FaceTime calls and things like that. But uh, the, the past couple of days, they've been pretty quiet. And uh, I didn't have them up on my, my TV like uh, Mr. Jones did, but uh, I had them just on my laptop. How many times has Miami called you? Uh, only a couple of times. How have those conversations gone? Not just with Miami, but with... Every team in general, what do they want to know about you? I, I saw you, I think, uh, Combine, you're on with Florio. And I think his one of his questions or Sim's question was, the thought that you're from Oregon and you've never lived outside of Oregon is a question for people. Is that something people – oh, great hair flip. Oh. Great, great hair flip right there. I want to let you know. Head and shoulders, that thing looked delicious. But the what have the questions been for you? Have they just been trying to get to know you as a person, trying to figure out? Have you talked to anybody other than coaches and GMs? Have they brought any psychologists or anything? What have the conversations been like? Yeah, shoot, that's that's a really packed question, so I'll do my best to unravel that. Nailed it. Um, quarterback a lot of, a lot of there's a lot of psychologists that you, that you talk to i think three or four teams that i've talked to and um a lot of them it's about uh being people think i'm pretty introverted pretty quiet things like that and um i've kind of had to answer that and i don't think i'm very quiet at all and uh if you ask a lot of the guys in the locker room they'd tell you differently and i talk too much sometimes um but <laughs> it's a lot of just that and uh gms coaches and things like that so um, it really hasn't been too bad. It's it's been a fun experience and um, something I've I've really enjoyed. This is a two. This is this was a two headed race for the quarterbacks. Everybody's talking about Joe Burrow, Tua, Joe Burrow, Tua, Joe Burrow, Tua. And I would assume that you were sitting back listening, like, hey, I've been having a lot of conversations with a lot of teams. I've done great in my workouts. Everybody knows that I'm athletic. Everybody knows that I'm an academic All American. Was there any thought in your team or your camp, like, hey, we should be getting a little bit more of this conversation? Because here, as of late, the Herbert conversation has come on very strong towards draft time. Or were you guys just kind of like, ah, it doesn't matter who they're talking about right now. Let's wait till the draft. Yeah, I think it's it's kind of been one of those things. You have to filter out information and a lot of everything's going to be said everyone's got an opinion on on what's going on and um, i think those two are really talented really special quarterbacks and it's been a lot of fun and i wish i had more time to watch them during the year just to see how special they truly are and, um, i know how athletically gifted they are so um, it's been really fun to to be able to work out with them go to the combine with them and things like that um, but it's it's been such a fun draft process i've, I've really enjoyed these past couple of weeks and uh, just to be in the in the conversations it's, it's really cool when i was watching you i forget maybe you're playing utah was that that was a primetime game, right? Yeah, twelve championship. Yeah, you're playing Utah, I think. Every time they zoomed in on your face, you just had the same face. It was like the same demeanor. It was like I think you're being perceived as this cool customer. Is that kind of how you are at all times? You got the great hair, the head and shoulders flow. You seem to be like this, like very cool, calming presence. Is that an accurate description of the Air Bear? 
I'd like to think that. Um, I would say that being a quarterback position, like you, you kind of have to handle yourself that way. And the highs are never too high, and the lows are never too low. So to kind of be somewhere in the middle and uh, be that guiding presence through adversity is, is something that I try to do. That was a great answer. How many times did you give that answer to NFL teams? <laughs> That was the first time. <laughs> really? Was there any stupid, yeah. was there any like, I don't want to say stupid questions because if you say it and the person that asked you the stupid question is like, well, we're not drafting him because he said our st- question was stupid. But was there any questions from those psychologists from teams that you were like my- blindsided by? For instance, when I hired people here, I asked them what kitchen appliance they would be if they were a kitchen appliance. A lot of people said fork and knife. That is not an appliance. I immediately dropped them off the books. <laughs> I, I'm looking for a microwave more yeah. so than anything. Did you get any questions that were kind of interesting that you thought like I did not expect to get asked that yeah I was asked uh which coach I'd rather punch in the face head coach offensive coordinator quarterback coach um and that was really out of the blue <laughs> <laughs> who'd you say who'd you say I said the quarterback the quarterback coach and why was that I, ha- I had kind of a relationship with him so I knew he'd understand and <laughs> <laughs> Uh, was that a was that a team representative? Was that a GM or was that like one of those psychologists? It came from the head coach, and so we were. I was sitting there with all three of them, and they're and they're they kind of pointed to each other, said, "Which one would you rather punch in the face?" And I kind of looked around, and I said, Do you, "I have to give you an answer." He said, "You have to give me an answer," and just pointed right at the quarterback coach, <laughs> <laughs> punch him right in his suckle. If I had to. <laughs> Have you been you've been working out with your brothers? Uh, if you've been staying in shape, I would assume that nobody has a clue. It's normally when you get drafted, you go to rookie mini camp the next week, and then you go straight into OTAs. Obviously, that's not going to happen this year. What have you been thinking about looking ahead, whatever team you go, how it's going to go forward? I would say I want to get down the the play as quickly as I can uh, from the moment that uh, the draft happens want to get the playbook want to get everything dialed in and, and start working on that and um, I, I, we don't really have an idea of, of when everyone's going to return to, to normalcy so um, whatever happens I'll, I'll do my best to, to pick up whatever I can we're one day out from the draft biggest night of your life do you have a sense of what's going to happen no idea Really? So you're just like everybody on television right now. Everybody on TV <laughs> has no idea what's going to happen. We have no idea what's going to happen. You have a sense. You don't even have a sense of what's going to happen. Not, not really. I kind of my best to kind of stay out of all projections and everything that. And I don't have any control over the situation. So whatever happens, happens. I'll make the most of it. You need to get better Wi-Fi before tomorrow. Night. <laughs> <laughs> you need to get better Wi-Fi. What, what is the setup going to be? Are you going to be in the basement with the family? Probably just the living room. We've we've they sent a bunch of cameras, so uh, my brother set that up, and we'll just be just my family and I in, in the living room. So what is it? It's like they got like one of those like Kim Kardashian round light things <laughs> that you put on the. Uh, is it like, is one of those setups? What is the setup? That's that's only for the interviews. So that that'll be after, and uh, for the living room, it's just a big light bar and an iPhone, and it's just recording. So you got a free iPhone from uh, ESPN NFL already. No, nah, we, we have to return it. <laughs> <laughs> I knew they were going to get your ass. You, you, hey, by the way, we have we have enclosed a stamped return for every iPhone that we send you here. That's absolutely beautiful. How will you spend tomorrow? You're fired up. You got to be a little bit anxious. You can't leave the house. Well, you do. Just try to sleep as much as you can but so you don't have to overthink what's going to happen. Your whole future, by the way, is being decided tomorrow night. I don't even know if you know that. You're, 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 you're moving to a brand new city starting tomorrow night. Your family's going to be fans of a brand new team starting tomorrow night. Your mission of being the face of a franchise starts tomorrow night. And I assume you can't wait for it to get over. How will you spend from now until then? Because waiting is the hardest part. <laughs> it's a song. <laughs> See, that's good. That's really good. Um, I would say probably just hanging out with my family, uh, kind of just doing things around the house. And um, I think I'm, I'm going to go lift. We've we've got some good weights in the backyard, so uh, kind of find things to do throughout the day and just stay busy. You going to the Dolphins or not, dude? <laughs> I have no idea. I, I don't know. Garber, just tell me, like, if it's 305, you know, you and Rick Ross down there, huh? down there on South Beach, we'll sling the rock in Fort Lauderdale a little bit. I wish I wish I knew. I wish I had an idea. I am sick of it, Justin. <laughs> I am sick of it. Head and Shoulders told me he's coming on. He has great hair. He uses Head and Shoulders products, and he will tell you exactly where he's going to get drafted tomorrow night. That's what I was told whenever I heard you're coming on the show. They told you that? No, no. I was just trying to force you. In there. <laughs>
<laughs> trying to force you into it. Hey, uh, I can't thank you enough for your time. Did you have any questions for this guy? I was going to ask it. Are you still wearing like a suit tomorrow? Or oh, is it great question. We were actually told not to wear a suit, so oh. um, I'll just probably be in some casual wear. Um, I feel like it'd be weird to, to be in a suit and sitting on the couch, so uh, just something to wear normal and, and kind of just look good, I guess. I, I'm not too sure. Have you signed a Nike deal yet? I have not. Really? Out of Oregon? I would assume that Phil Knight would have locked you down immediately. He wants to see what happens tomorrow night, too, huh? That's wild. I, I, that is absolutely <laughs> wild. Interesting. I've, I mean, I've always been loyal to Nike, and, and uh, I will be, so um, I, I know one day we'll Justin, we'll, we'll shut up. Out. Don't Stop it. Listen, <laughs> don't say that. Justin will wear Adidas if Nike doesn't come to the table with a massive amount. Your agent didn't say that. You're from Oregon. You didn't say that. I am here saying that if Adidas comes with the bag... Oh, yeah. Justin Air Bear will head right to the Three Stripes Ville. Is that right? No, I can't comment on that. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Justin, you need a little leverage here. They think they got you because you're a kid from the town where Nike was created. They think they got you. They're going to try to come in there and lowball. That, that is not the Justin Herbert deal that I am looking for with that good of hair, that good of a brain, and potential number five pick overall to the Miami Dolphins. I think we need a big-time Nike deal. What's uh? What's your fee to to represent people? Uh, it's like standard forty five percent. I'm not great. I'm not a good agent, but I'll get you a good deal. I'll get you a good deal. Do you play video games or anything like that? A little bit. What's your game? Call of Duty. Uh, I have played that a little bit, but I'm not very good. Yeah, me neither. At all. What's your game? Madden. Well, it's not really my game. I'm not very good at that either. <laughs> I'm not very good at any video games. So I think they're just kind of fun. What are hobbies for you? Uh, I like to golf. Oh, so you're classic quarterback here. Yeah, you're just quarterback through and through. How's your game? Pretty good? You got like a handicap or anything like that? Uh, not really. It's I can hit the ball long ways, but it's just not very straight. Do they have golf courses in Oregon? Yeah, they do. A lot. A lot. <laughs> I've never been. I've never been. I've heard it's awesome. I've heard great things. I've never been to Oregon. I've never in my entire life been there. What do you think? Do you think your athleticism is underrated? Um, I would say so. I, I think. I uh, think so. By the way, the last the last two games of the year, uh, Utah and Wisconsin, are, are kind of games that we um, kind of had more read aspects, more zone read type stuff in in the game plan and. Um, I thought that really helped our team, and uh, that's kind of one of the things that we looked at and thought we had an advantage with. Yeah, because stupid Orlovsky, okay, Dan Orlovsky, stupid, stupid Dan Orlovsky, okay? He's on ESPN. He's on Get Up Every Morning. He was in the NFL a long time. He said Tua is a thrower. Herbert is more of an athlete who's going to have to learn how to. And I'm like, well, why is that a bad thing? I don't think that's a bad thing to have a guy who's athletic on there. So anything Dan says, I hope you understand that that dumb guy has nothing to do with what anybody else thinks. I think he's pretty smart. I, I I've gotten to know him a little bit. And, he's dumb, and uh, <laughs> he normally has has good things to say. You can call him stupid if you want. I would actually enjoy that. I, I can't. I'm on. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen. From head and shoulders, camp, great hair. We don't know if he's going to be with Nike or Adidas or even Under Armour in yeah. the future. Mm -hmm. Let's keep those options on the table, Justin. This is now a business and not a game. Tomorrow night, about to get very wealthy with incredible hair from Oregon, Justin Herbert. Thank you, Justin. <laughs> Thank you, guys. Hey, good luck, man. You want, Before you go here, just who did you do your most interviews with? <laughs> You can give there are a few teams. I would say probably the Chargers, the the, the Dolphins are probably the, the two most teams that I interviewed with. Okay, thank you so much. I'm putting together a mock draft right now. You just made me sound a lot smarter. Ladies and gentlemen, Justin. <laughs> thank you, man. Good luck, dude. You're going to do great. Enjoy the hell out of this. See you guys. See ya. Okay. Nice little nugget there. Nice. Wait a minute. Chargers, Dolphins. Okay, so everybody's talking about yeah. Tua Herbert going 5-6. Jordan Palmer said that he thought they were going to stick with Tyrod Taylor at six because he didn't get a lot of calls with Justin Herbert's here. Like I talked a lot to the chargers, talked a lot to the dolphins. <sighs> All right. Okay. <laughs> we got to get to a break. We're going to do some YouTube questions during it. And then we'll hit some phone calls to wrap up this hour. Justin Herbert, six foot five, calm, cool, collected. That's an LA guy, isn't it? Oh that, yeah. That's an LA dude. Quarterback right? guy. Could be a Miami guy though, too. Oh, with that flow behind mm -hmm. Ryan Fitzpatrick. Mm -hmm. He's gonna be brain some too. Moroccan oil. The humidity in Miami is not good for hair like that. 
Argon nuts. <laughs> Could have been mine. <laughs> this is Pat McAfee show. I could have been a billionaire. <laughs> I could have been a billionaire because of the Moroccan oil. That comes from Argon Nuts. I know the Argon Nut guy Ugh. in Morocco. Met him face to face before the Moroccan oil takeover. Shook his hand, gave me his number. It even started with like an international code. Then I got drunk on a cruise and lost his number. A year later, I see spread. Moroccan oil fixes everything. That's my guy. Could have been me. That would have been McAfee's magic nuts. 